We're looking at the Buffalo, the Buffalo 34. This model is also available in several other widths. So it's available in 20 inch, 24, 27 and 34 inches wide. We still use the uh, Imperial measurements. The Buffalo is quite unique uh, when it comes to mowing has a big 8 inch diameter or 200 millimetre diameter cutting cylinder with 8 blades. Um, also has a rubber coated rear roller, great for giving good stripes. It's where presentation and striping is really, really important. So with the Buffalo range we use the Honda engine, uh, great starters, the standard unleaded fuel in the tanks. One thing to remember is that with the fuel tank there is no gauze or, or strainer in the top. So it's really important to make sure if you do refuel during the demonstration, you make sure the top of the tank is wiped and clean so you, there's no possibility of actually washing in any grass clippings into the tank. The, uh, we have standard fuel levers. So the top one is choke on, the bottom one is fuel off and fuel on. We have two on off switches fitted to the mower. We have the standard one, which comes with the Honda engine on the front here, but we also have an on-off switch at the top of the handlebars. The one at the top of the handlebars just saves you having to mess around the front of the engine. You can just stand in the operator uh, position and switch the mower on or off. Both switches do need to be in the on position to start. To start with the mower, I make sure that the switches are in the on position. I switch the fuel on, I put choke on, and then what I do, Bit of pull, take it off choke and switch off here. So great starters, easy to start, easy to switch off. One of the big features of the Buffalo mower is that we can actually mow on tick over of the engine speed. Because with the Allet range we actually use a bigger engine than is physically needed. On this here we use the Honda GX160 uh, engine, but we can actually mow on tick over. It fools a lot of people because mowing on tick over they automatically think that they're not getting the clip rate. The clip rate is how, how many times that cylinder is turned against the bottom blade over the given distance for every metre that we travel forward. On tick over the mower is 88 cuts per metre and that goes for whether that be the Buffalo 20 or right up to the Buffalo 34. If we want to go faster I've got a throttle lever here that if we raise gradually it will increase the forward speed of the mower. So on tick over it's at 88 cuts per metre. If I increase my forward speed because I want to walk quicker more faster if I increase the speed by 15 or 20 percent the cylinder and the rear roller always speed up by 15 or 20 percent so I can mow on tick over 88 cuts per meter or at maximum rpm still 88 cuts per meter so straight away a lot of people make the mistake of starting the engine setting it up to maximum rpm thinking they're going to get a higher clip rate a better finish you're not it's just going to be too quick and the mower is not going to be maneuverable so the whole idea is we can operate the mower at very low engine speed which is giving us great lower vibration it's also giving us better uh, lower emissions but also a lot better fuel economy as well i'll let you use the bail bar system on our handlebar controls so our handlebars here this is our main handlebars these are the bail bars the front bail bar here as i bring that in engages the cutting cylinder the rear bail bar here, as I bring that in, engages forward motion of the mower. So that when I mow, we mow with both levers clamped together. When they're clamped together, that's giving us the 88 cuts per meter. Again, the important thing is that if I get into trouble at any time, I let go. When I let go, the cylinder will stop, the rear roller will stop, and, but the engine will still run. Handlebars have a fundamental difference to maybe some of the other manufacturers in that the handlebars float, they pivot. Now that's done for two reasons. One is hand-arm vibration. So that's the vibration coming through from the engine and the cylinder and bottom blade into my hands. Because you've got to bear in mind that these machines are used for long periods of time. These are professional machines used all day, every day. So the handlebars float. Um, they float to reduce the hand-arm vibration. So we have two rubber isolators down on the base of the handlebar here. Two on the left-hand side, but we also have two sorry, 12, uh, eight rubber isolators on the top bottoms of the hand, of the top of the bottom section of handlebars to reduce our hand arm vibration. But the other feature is, so when we're mowing, so we're mowing with both levers clamped together like this, the mower is actually independent of our handlebars. The mower 
It actually allows the handlebars to remain stationary and the mower to follow the contours of the lawn or the contours of the pitch. Handlebars are spring-loaded down here. We have two springs, one on the right, one on the left. And we also have little cam adjusters here. So over time, if the springs lose their tension over five, six, seven or eight years time, we can just retension those with this little cam. Uh, but again, that is dealt with uh, with your service provider. Top section of handlebars here, I can actually pivot to suit the height of the operator. Because again, with these mowers being used for long periods of time, it has to be comfortable to use. So to... Um, Adjust the handlebars, again, I need my 13 millimeter spanner. And I have two bolts here that I slacken, don't take out, just slacken, two bolts here. This allows the handlebar to be adjusted to suit the height of the operator. Because we don't have any linkages or bars in between from the engine to the handlebars, it means we can position these handlebars to wherever the operator feels comfortable. Once you've got them at a desired height, lock the handlebars into position, Again, using your 13 mil spanner. The handlebars are now set. We also have a handbrake. We have to have a handbrake on the machine by law. To apply the handbrake, I pull the lever back and I have a locking screw here that I lock in position. That just holds the handbrake on the mower. That's ideal if the mower is being transported in the back of a vehicle or say on a trailer as well. To release the handbrake, I release the lock here the handbrake is released, I can now pull the mower backwards or push that forwards. The weight of the mower is 180 kilos, so when we're turning at the ends of pitches, you don't want to be pushing that forward, you want to be driving it forward. As I think we've mentioned in some of the other videos, that the manoeuvrability of the Alec range of mowers is really exceptional, and particularly in tight small spaces as well. The drive on the Buffalo system, we don't use gearboxes, clutches or clutch packs. We actually use just drive belts. So we have a pulley at the top, pulley at the bottom, with two or three V-belts going round. And when I push this lever in here, literally all it's doing is tensioning the drive belt to create the drive. One thing that we need to point out to customers is the ease of adjustment, because that shouldn't frighten people at all. So we have customers currently using the Alec product for, we've got two customers using the products now for 22 years, and they've never changed their drive belts before. We always recommend changing drive belts annually because they're doing generally a lot of work and we don't want them to fail in season, but it's all about making, showing the customer how easy and simple it is to, 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 to drive and manoeuvre. Rear bail bar takes up the drive of the mower, and that should just start to take the drive up when I've got a 30 millimetre gap, again, between the handlebar and the bail bar. Front bail bar, again, cylinder should just start to turn when I've got a 30 millimetre gap. So when I hold them together, we've got one-to-one -one drive. The belts will stretch a little bit from new, they'll bed into the pulleys, so it means we need to make adjustment. So each lever has a cable connected to them. So if you follow the cable down from the lever, we have an inline adjuster here, so keep the lock nut finger tight, one rotation on that adjuster, screwing it apart or anti-clockwise, lock that adjuster up with your fingers. That's now taken us back to 30 millimetres. Same for your cylinder drive, follow the cable down. I've got an adjuster here where I can do my adjustments. Adjustments probably will be made from new with a brand new mower after say maybe six weeks of use. Uh, you just need to give them an adjustment. Um, but you'll probably do that maybe twice in a year. And after that, you probably won't need to do them again at all. The whole idea is just keeping it very simple and basic. So the adjustment is done in line. We don't have to take any guards off or use any tools. It's about making sure the customer knows just how simple it is to, to adjust and set. So all of the Buffaloes have what we call a rubber coated rear, rear roller. So it's steel constructed, but actually has a ru hard rubber outer. Now on the Buffalo 34, it's three sections. So when I tip back, when I turn, you can see one roller is going forward, one is going back. Again, makes the turning a lot easier, but also less damage to the turf at the ends of the runs. So we mentioned the Buffalo is quite unique because it uses an 8-inch diameter or this big 200mm diameter uh, cutting cylinder. Um, ideal for cutting long grass, wet grass, but also it's really robust. We call it debris tolerant, so small sticks, twigs. This will handle quite well. Also has these little features of these fins, 
Um, some of the other competitors on the market don't have them. If we didn't have them, what would actually happen is that the, because of the nature of how the cylinder is made, it'll actually fill the grass box to one side, which means you've got an, an uneven weight balance. So with these, when you are cutting long grass, you'll see these are actually dividing the grass clippings up into the grass box so we get even grass box fill and even grass box weight distribution. On the top we have here what we call the throw plate. We can adjust the throw plate to either become closer to the cylinder or move back from the cylinder. So if in summer when the grass is really dry and light, if we slacken this with using your 10 mil spanner, the bolt, we just slacken them, we don't take them out, they can actually move the throw plate closer to the cylinder, just creates more draft to put the grass or the material into the grass box. To be honest, you don't really need to adjust them. I've probably ever only adjusted them three times in the whole of my career with Alec, but it is there as a feature. The Buffalo is fitted with a large diameter front roller. Uh, this enables better viewing of, for, for the operator if you're running up against the edge of the previous stripe or if you're str stringing out for bays on football pitches. just makes it a lot easier from an operator's perspective. So the Buffalo's come with large grass boxes. Um, grass boxes, the Buffalo 34 is a handle at the top, also has a recess for your hand at the, at the end. Again, makes the grass box empty and very easy. What we'd also say is, don't fill the grass box to its maximum capacity because you can get a lot of weight in here. What we want is we don't want too much weight pushing that front roller down into the pitch which has altered your height of cut but also the play of the pitch as well. To apply the grass box we just literally drop that on over the top of the hoop. So again it's very simple and very easy. Different from some of our competitors where sometimes two, two man lift is actually required to empty the grass box. We would recommend um, to, to enable uniformity of both pitches and lawns, that you work, don't fill this grass box really any more than uh, a third full. When it gets to a third full, empty. It's more emptying, but it creates uniformity of the stripe, but also a great presentation as well. Removal of the grass box is really easy on the Buffalo range. Um, it has to be easy, otherwise customers just don't like it. So to remove the grass box, let's grab the handle, lifts off, we can then go and empty. When the machine's put away for storage, we can fold the grass box mounting hoop back, just makes it a little bit easier for storage in the sheds. From a maintenance perspective, we need to keep the machine clean. So after every use, particularly in damp and wet conditions, we need to just wash out the cutting cylinder, wash out the throw plate. We don't use pressure washers in and around the bearing areas. And what we do then is apply WD-40 to the blades because we need to keep those sharp, shiny surfaces clean and crisp, ready for when we take the machine out next time. I'm just going to show you how, we, how manoeuvrable the machine is, uh, even with the grass box on. So I'll just replace the grass box again. I'm just going to start the machine. So switch on, fuel on, choke on. So, on tick over at the engine speed, if I bring the rear lever in slowly, it'll take the drive up slowly. So again, the machine is very manoeuvrable. We feather the drive rather than bringing it all the way in. If we feather the drive, tip back, we can then manoeuvre that machine around. Bearing in mind this machine is 180 kilos, but very simple to manoeuvre. So from a maintenance perspective, it's about keeping it clean. It's about cl cleaning the, the throw plate out, making sure the cylinder's washed out after every use. Um, from a greasing perspective, you'd probably need to be greasing every, every month. So the machine is fitted with uh, eight grease nipples in total. We've got two on the cutting cylinder, one on the right, one on the left. We've got two bearings on the rear roller, one on the right and one on the left. You need to get down on your hands and knees with a grease gun. So these are flange bearings, so as you're pumping fresh grease in with your grease gun, the old grease is starting to come out. Um, we also have another four grease nipples under here. So again, when you're greasing monthly, slacken these two bolts at the front, slacken the two at the back, remove this one from the side, the guard will then come off. So it exposes uh, four grease nipples under there. So again, a, a number of eight grease nipples. Um, standard unleaded fuel in the tank. Oil level is here. So the oil level, we have a, a dipstick. And the oil should just come to the top of the threads. 
And if you do need to top the Honda engine up with oil, you do it in this position here. So it actually means if the oil starts to run out, the engine's full. So the whole idea is that you can't overfill the engine. There's also another one of these little um, caps at the back, but that's used for, for draining oil as well. Air filter. We have an air filter on the engine. Uh, and what will happen, you'll get clippings under here over time, so we can take the air filter off. The air filter comes with what we call a pre-filter sleeve, so that protects the actual element itself. As you can see, we start to get a build-up of debris uh, under, the, under the cover. Give that a shake or a blowout, put your sleeve back on, and replace that back onto the, onto the engine. So you'd do that as part of your maintenance and what we'd probably recommend in your shed, you have a, a wall planner and you tick off that monthly once that maintenance has been done. If it's part of a group of people or a team, we recommend that very few people are actually involved in the setting and the maintenance side because generally the more people you have involved, the less the machine gets maintained. So it just needs to be down to a very small group of specific people. Thank you.